Today we're talking about how to handle employees calling off of a lawn care and landscape industry. And this really pertains to every industry because we're all going to deal with this. It's going to be more challenging though in the beginning. Like you just got started, you hired your first employee, now it's you and a guy, you and a girl, whatever. And then you hire a couple more people and now you've maybe split it up and tried to create two crews. The second one of those people calls off, I just remember this time, it feels like the world is just gonna end because now a crew gets shut down and you just don't have the bandwidth to take that on or deal with that. And maybe they're both mowing and it's all stuff that has to get done today. And it's pretty easy to create a situation that is extremely challenging for yourself. And I hope this video guides you one to know that that's a part of it. You're gonna have to get through that. It's gonna get easier when you get more people apart, it's gonna get easier. It's still gonna be a challenge but it's gonna be less of a problem when people call off down the road. And I hope that it gives you some tools to build the company and think about these things a little bit differently to make it less problematic overall and, and try to build out resources and guides to know exactly what's gonna happen when these situations come up. So the first thing that I really like to see in the company. And now I, if I would have known this from the beginning and I think I always knew I wanted this, but I didn't know how important it is. And just having people that can be flexible. At first you're probably not hiring office people, but eventually you'll be doing that as well. And, and ultimately all of the team being flexible, meaning they are multi-skilled. If it's a person that mows a lawn, well, they can also go and plant a plant. If they're a person that landscapes, they can also go do lighting. If they're a person in the office that handles selling projects, well, they can also answer the phone and or schedule projects like a production manager or just be multifaceted, multi-skilled, be able to drop into other roles. This gives you flexibility and this allows you to deal with these things a little bit easier. If you go back and rewind to that small startup crew and having two crews, as long as you've got people that you feel comfortable with, hey, one of these people could run alone. Well, then it makes it flexible enough that that person's got the ability and the fortitude to still keep a crew running. Even if you lost one of those smaller group of people, one of those members, right? Then it allows you to kind of know what you're going to do in that situation. So flexible people that have a bunch of different skills and or just have some grit to be able to un understand and handle a harder situation because someone calls out and maybe they could still go put in a half day alone, a day alone, whatever the case may be to keep you pushing and get you through. Because in the startup phase and if you're in a growing phase, there's always going to be having to really push and to try to get through stuff. And there's always going to be a new fire, a new problem, a new challenge that you're going to have to overcome. And hiring and handling and dealing with calling off and, and what that brings to your company, that's, that's just a big part of it. Now, besides flexibility within your staff. The second part of this is having some kind of contingency plan. And when I say contingency plan, what do I mean? Well, I mean, I know that John over here, if he calls out, Jack fills that role. Meaning everyone in the company, you know where people go. We do this a lot with an org chart and we map out the crews and we map out the team as a whole. And so if anything happens, if anything shakes up, we know that these members have these skills, they flow over here, these members have these skills. Because the ultimate goal is not one or two people calls out and stuff just doesn't get done and has to get pushed off. It becomes, this is the plan. So when A and B things break or fail, you could go into option C and you still get the things done. So having a contingency plan, this requires one, your people be flexible and still wanting to learn more skills. Two, you understanding their skills and what all they can do so you can properly utilize. And then three, really having things set up so we know when this person's out, this person comes in. This person's out and that person's out. This is the second backup, all these different situations. So we're prepped ahead. You got to spend hours and hours and hours. You just need to have roles that can back up other roles and know where and when and how they fill in so it doesn't bottleneck the company when these things happen. And finally, making sure you have enough staff. This is why I said at the beginning, this is hard. As you grow your company, when I originally got taught the idea of having a contingency plan, the company that showed me this and really cast this in a conversation in our training day here in Florida a couple of years ago, they said that they had 27 people at the time. And they realized that like, they didn't really need more staff members. And that's why they didn't want to hire more staff. But they always had sick or vacation or something going on between those people. So there was always more like 
25 and a half, 25. And so what ended up happening and mathing out was that they needed to actually have a little bit of overstaffing. They needed to have an extra person, an extra two people. And theoretically, the pay was not going to be that much different for all the lost opportunity and lost revenue potential generation from not having the right people to get the stuff done. So having more people allowed them to fill the gaps and fill the roles of when those situations, this came up through analysis, right? To have the people to keep the ship moving forward, no matter what the situation. So therefore it felt like just outside to look it in, oh, that was going to be us overstaffed. What it actually ended up being is pay was almost the same and we generated more revenue because there was less slowdowns and that kind of filled the gaps and fixed things. So verifying you've got the right amount of people, you may need to be a little overstaffed because you know something's always going to happen. Somebody's going to call in, somebody's going to have a vacation, somebody is going to need to be able to roll in for someone. And if you don't have enough people to be able to move someone around, a lot of times we'll keep a third person on a landscape crew and then they'll do door hangers on the landscape crew or if the jobs are really, really big, they'll pitch in and help on those jobs, but they can be peeled off and put on a mo crew or another crew to facilitate us moving forward. So I hope these three things really give you some ideas to think about and some ideas to help you get going and make this easier. And then just to know it's going to be hard when it first got started and there's only two, three, four people. It seemed like, wow, dude, anytime somebody called in, it was major. Once it started getting 10, 15, 20 people, it seems like no matter what, you can move the pieces around to still really accomplish a lot. But if you take it a step further, do some contingency planning, know who can go where, and then evaluate your company and see, do we have enough people or do we really need to have one or two more than what we actually think? Because there's always something going on, somebody off, some situation. And what we realize is a lot of times we do run a little overstaffed and that seems like, oh my gosh, in a, in a money scarcity thing, you wouldn't want to do that. But in reality, there's plenty of money to go around. There's a ton of opportunity to be lost. What we really need to be doing is having those extra people so we can take that opportunity that becomes available and not lose out on it.